Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko and we begin this evening with what officials are calling an alarming rescue and growing concern around the fentanyl crisis. Paramedics telling us they revived a toddler who appeared to have swallowed tin foil laced with the deadly drug. Catherine Cook is live in Southeast Portland with details on how first responders saved that child. And Catherine, this just takes your breath away. It is hard to hear, David. The baby girl is just 15 months old and she wasn't breathing when paramedics arrived here to this parking garage near Southeast 28th and Hawthorne. Once paramedics realized she had ingested fentanyl, they went from performing CPR and reached for Narcan. This all happened around 530 on Friday night. Fire officials say the parents were both with the toddler in a car in the parking garage. An off duty paramedic was first to respond and started CPR. Portland Fire and Rescue took over and soon learned the toddler had spit up tin foil. They found it and other drug paraphernalia in the parents car. That's when they shifted into an overdose response, carefully measuring out a smaller dose of Narcan for the child. After the opioid reversal drug was given, the baby began to respire again, began to breathe on their own. So to me, that indicates that there was fentanyl on the aluminum foil that was placed into the mouth of the child. You know, 15 month old children, we all know, they sample, like they just put things in their mouth. And in this case, it nearly killed the toddler. Medics transported her to the hospital, but officials haven't released her latest condition. The toddler's parents stayed on scene and police say they are cooperating. No arrests have been made, but DHS was notified. Now, first responders say they don't respond to a lot of these child fentanyl overdoses, but they say they are becoming more and more common. As you know, those pills, they often look like candy and children are becoming more and more exposed to them, whether it's in their own house or out in the community. First responders say it is critical for parents to talk to their kids, whatever age they are, about this epidemic. David? Yes, yeah, so important to have those conversations with our loved ones again and again. Catherine Cook in Southeast. Thank you, Catherine. Let's get to your headlines now this Monday, beginning with the body of an airman who was killed in what the Air Force is calling a Humvee incident in Colorado, arriving back home in Oregon. Trinity Reinhardt's casket is on a plane that's set to land at PDX in the next 10 minutes. It will then be escorted down I-5 home to her family in Springfield, where she will be laid to rest. Her family is asking people to show their support by lining the route with signs and flags as she makes her final journey south. Reinhardt was serving at Warren Air Force Base near Cheyenne, Wyoming. The Air Force says it is investigating the cause of the crash. In Harney County, a judge is set to decide whether Oregon's new law on gun control is constitutional. Measure 114, which is essentially on pause, would require a permit to purchase a gun, expand background checks, and ban large capacity magazines. Now, in their closing arguments today, Oregon DOJ lawyers said the changes would make everyone safer, though gun rights advocates argued the law suppresses their right to defend themselves. If a right can be taken away simply because it furthers public safety in some way, it is not a right at all. The public had a valid public safety purpose in passing Measure 114. The large capacity magazine restriction also does not unduly burden the right to bear arms. Well, the judge has two months to issue a ruling and all indications are whichever way he rules, that decision will likely be appealed. Some Kaiser Permanente workers say they are set to walk off the job as soon as next week. SEIU, that is their union, telling us they're planning to strike October 4th through 6th. That is next Wednesday, Thursday and Friday and then return to work on the 7th. While their contract does not expire until this Saturday, the union says as of right now, there are no other planned negotiation sessions. Locally, this involves about 4,000 employees in Oregon and Southwest Washington. And this rainy cooler weather is helping firefighters throughout our region right now. Crews say that means some of the larger fires have slowed their growth and some are now entirely out. Meanwhile, officials in Multnomah County say they plan to lift the summer burn ban at the end of this week. That means that residents can resume outdoor burning as the wildfire risk goes down. Matt? David, what a difference a weekend makes in terms of wildfire. Last week, our map was lit up with the wildfire symbols. Now, they're scattered few and far between western Montana, southeastern Idaho, northern California, none in Oregon or Washington that are detected 
by satellite and for good reason. We had good rainfall and happened right where some of the biggest fires were burning, like on the southern coast. Nearly two inches of rain down at Coos Bay and North Bend. That's just west of the big Anvil fire. Northern California near the Smith River complex got a bunch of rain. And of course, the western valleys did well with the rainfall as well. We're not done yet. And for that reason, there's a flood watch out for the Siskiyous in southern Oregon, again, where some of those biggest fires had been burning. Now the concern is debris flows and landslides as you get heavy rain on those burn scars. Notice, though, fire season not completely over. We've got a fire weather warning out for southern Oregon here, mainly because of the strong winds that will be blowing there as this next system comes rolling on shore. Now we got showers coming on shore right now, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. The week ahead will be wet, but that times out really well for a great weekend and a great start to October. More on that in just a bit. David, back to you. Yeah, it looks pretty promising. Thank you, Matt. Firefighters from around the state packed into a Salem City Council meeting this evening, demanding the city support a fallen firefighter by continuing to pay benefits to his widow. Salem firefighter Mo Stadley died in 2019 from tonsil cancer. His widow Tina was given his workers compensation benefit, but because his cancer was ruled a line of duty death. Now, an Oregon law allows family of deceased firefighters to get those benefits because they are exposed to so many dangerous materials on the job. But now the city of Salem has asked the the Oregon Supreme Court to review that case, arguing the cancer that killed Stadley was not work related. Stadley's widow told us today she is disappointed the city continues to fight against paying those benefits. It is very important because, um, you know, I'm by myself and I can't work. To me, the most important thing right now is the future um, firefighters. Well, and the potential to set a precedent there. While the city did not make anyone available today for an interview in a statement, the city manager said while they appreciate Stadley's service, they have to consider what is best for the city's fiscal health. September is Suicide Prevention Month, and locally the statistics show what appears to be a concerning trend, a higher number of young people seeking help for urgent mental health needs. Daisy Caballero is here with a closer look. Daisy. Yeah, David, just this past month, Dornbecker Children's Hospital saw a higher number of youth with urgent mental health needs compared to last August. And of those who attempted suicide, many are doing it with prescription medication. Overdosing on medications in the home is a common means by which kids attempt suicide. Medications are a leading contributor to suicides across the country. In August, the Dornbecker Children's Hospital saw a rise in youth suicidal thoughts compared to last August. Even before the pandemic, we were seeing an increase in the crisis but it was exacerbated by the pandemic. Kyle Johnson is a professor in the Division of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at OHSU. They have been tracking this ongoing trend since 2015. And while suicidal thoughts are on the rise among youth, Johnson says suicide attempts have stayed consistent. And of those attempts in August, 91% of cases did so by medication overdoses. Yeah, the acute phase of a suicidal crisis is often short lived. So if we can obstruct that suicidal impulse in some way, we can save lives. And a medication lockbox is a means to do that. Lines for Life Oregon is one of the many nonprofits trying to help. In the first year of the suicidal crisis lifeline 988 launching, Lines for Life has answered over 40,000 calls and 10,000 texts total from those in a mental health crisis. And more are coming in from youth as the school year is starting back up. And this is what we hear from some of our contacts is that the transition from the summer to the school year can be incredibly challenging. Uh, there's a lot of changes and a lot of growth and a lot of uncertainty that goes with getting back in school. Just like Johnson, Emily Moser with Lines for Life says having easy access to pills plays a huge part in this ongoing crisis. These are the things that we hear that the pills are, I have the pills right here. Um, or I can get them in my mother's uh, or my my family's uh, uh, cabinet. Having a safe place to store and lock medication with at-risk youth at home is encouraged. OHSU has launched a program giving away lock boxes for families who visit their facility to use at home. 
And there's also more funding also on the way to combat the problem. The Oregon Health Authority recently announced it's awarding over $640,000 to local suicide prevention initiatives. David. Thank you, Daisy. A reminder this evening, if you or someone you know is in crisis, know that you are not alone. Help is out there. All you have to do is call this number 988 anytime. That is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. Again, that number for you, 988. Straight ahead on KGW News at 6, the price of gas has a special sting when you see how much we are paying compared to the rest of the country. Our verified theme on why it really costs so much more. Plus, slithery and slimy and with plenty of time for Halloween. See why a rebound in this fish population is actually big news and later. Moments like these, though, we live for them. We really love basketball. Oh, meet the Remix hopefuls aiming for the G League on a journey to make their dreams come true. Stay with us.